Welcome back to the Leslie Marshall Show, filling in for Leslie and I'm Carl Frisch. If you're just joining us, we are talking about food safety, uh, and it's really an issue that I think impacts all of us. We are talking to Jane Kleb, the editor of BoldNebraska.org uh, and a candidate for school board in her own right. Jane, how does the issue of food safety, uh, in, I mean, we hear about these recalls, um, you know, of eggs or whatever product. Um, and, you know, and up until you just told me in the last segment, I had no idea that those were voluntary recalls and that there was no government ability to enforce them. Um, w- what is the real world impact of the lack of uh, appropriate regulation and accountability? Well, you know, for one thing, thousands of people get sick every year because of the unsafe food that, you know, hits our refrigerators and hits our kitchen tables. Um, so, you know, that's one thing. And then just the tremendous cost to the United States every year. I mean, you, you know, said the total number. It's $152 billion. So not only are folks sick and some dying, um, it's also just a huge burden on our states and on our country. So this is an easy fix. I mean, this is not a complicated fix. This is making sure that, you know, our facilities are being inspected. It's making sure that we have a mandatory recall system in place. It's also making sure that, you know, our schools, for example, have a good system, um, a, a, line of, a direct line of communication with the government, so when a food is recalled, schools are notified immediately. That's not even happening right now. So and, you have lots of kids that are going to school and eating school lunch. Not only is it not healthy, but that's a whole other topic. Uh, you know, a lot of times they're feeding kids food that has been voluntarily recalled. So I, I wanted to touch are, on... That, that subject that you just mentioned, I think everybody uh, in the country is now familiar with Jamie Oliver's Food Revolution, which won an uh, Emmy Award uh, at the Creative Artist Emmys uh, the other night. Um, you've made um, healthy school food part of your campaign, but obviously there are people fighting for the same thing nationwide. Why is it such a problem and what can be done about it? You know, there are some, like, fundamental problems. One is that, you know, schools are only given a limited amount of funding uh, in order to feed our kids. And so they really do the best that they can with stretching those dollars. And that means that when the government has surplus foods, the foods can buy, the, the schools can buy that food at a really cheap rate and sometimes get it for free. So unfortunately, though, a lot of times that food is just processed and unhealthy food. So schools essentially buy that and, you know, try to do best with making a healthy or as healthy as possible meal for our kids. Um, So that's one problem. We, you know, have gone away from developing a network of small business and local and fresh healthy food uh, in our communities and instead have relied on these big kind of, you know, Sodexo and, and other contracts with big vendors or vendors with the government. And so... There's one fundamental problem of just how we're purchasing food and in the expense of food. And then, you know, we have a problem with our school facilities. A lot of our schools, you know, my little girl's school is over 50 years old. They don't have a kitchen, which means the the cafeteria workers are essentially just reheating the food, um, and it's all cooked, you know, off-site at a central kitchen. And so our kids aren't even getting, you know, fresh school lunches. And, again, the schools... You know, I don't fault the schools for this. It's not like the schools are sitting in some room and saying, you know, how can we feed our kids, you know, garbage for school lunch? Uh, You know, they just don't have the facilities and they don't have the funding in order to feed our kids healthy food. So it is one of the big platforms that I'm running on for school board because I just think all of us can agree that we have got to start making sure our kids eat healthy lunch um, and fresh food. And you know, to push back on Rush Limbaugh, because, you know, I get this often, too, right? <laughs> oh, well, Jane, you're then, you must be some, you know... You are trying to, to take to parenting away animal from animal people who want to parent their children. Let them eat <laughs> fried food, Jane. Exactly right, right? Exactly right. It's exactly right. It's exactly what he would say. And so, you know, that's just ludicrous. When we say healthy, you know, that could mean a sloppy joe. It could mean chili. It could mean tacos for <laughs> right. our kids. It's how it's made. It doesn't mean, you know, that we're going to take away food from our kids and only feed them, you know, salad and carrots. So, you know, healthy can be delicious. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. So, um, obviously, food safety is is a pressing issue in this country. Um, How does it tie into both progressives? I imagine that because uh, Nebraska uh, is such an agricultural state, 
uh, that bold Nebraska encounters these issues as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, when we started organizing around food safety and we're organizing, uh, one of the biggest issues we're organizing right now is on this uh, Trans-Canada pipeline that's trying to cross through our sand hills and water. Um, but with food safety, it really was easy to organize not only moms and kind of families around it, but our small producers as well, because they're really getting the short end of the stick because these big ad companies, you know, who are often the time, the often the biggest culprits of the bad food and, and the tainted food, um, you know, then they get a bad rap. So if they're a small pork producer and, you know, when, you know, something goes wrong with having to recall pork, then these smaller producers, you know, really are impacted because people then stop buying pork. Or the small egg producers, people then stop buying eggs. So, you know, the smaller producers really want to see more inspection of these bigger facilities as well because they know uh, that there's problems there. So uh, if people are listening at home and they want to jump in head first in this, obviously, uh, you know, they can go to your campaign website if they want to help you uh, at, uh, what is it, votecleb.com. Uh, K-L-E-E-B. Um, what can people do in their own community to fight for food safety issues uh, and for the, the lunches and other meals that are served at schools? Yeah, I think first and foremost on food safety, um, since it's already passed the House, you shouldn't you know, bother with talking with your, your House member, um, but you should definitely contact both of your senators. And um, on the Pew website, the Make Our Food Safe, you know, they do list which senators have, you know, co-sponsored the bill so far. And it's a fair amount of both Republicans and Democrats. And really, this is now in the lap of Reed. Reed has to commit to putting it on the floor for a vote. And I think, you know, the last couple months just have been filled with all sorts of drama and all sorts of bills. Sure. Uh, that's why it hasn't made the floor. But we need some pressure from folks really telling their senators it's time to bring up the food safety bill because, you know, when we look at the vote count, we definitely have enough votes uh, to pass the bill. So it's a matter of, you know, making sure that it's on the radar screen of folks. If you're just joining us, we've been chatting with Jane Klebb. She's the editor of Bold, uh, boldnebraska.org. Um, we've been talking about food safety, and you can make your voice heard at makeourfoodsafe.org. You can sign up to, to fight for food safety uh, and other issues related to that. Jane, I want to thank you for coming on the program tonight. Thanks, Carl.